Hello, you're welcome. All right, so now we are looking at um, capacitors and uh, dielectrics. Okay, so now the question is, what's a capacitor? Now, a capacitor is actually a device that stores charge. Okay. What capacitor does this is a device that stores electric charge in an electric field? All right. So now, um, a capacitor actually is being constructed by placing two metals side by side okay two metal side by side which of course serves as a um a plate one is a positive plate while the other is negative plate and in between the two metals that is placed side by side okay lies a medium an insulator okay and that insulator is what is known as a dielectric medium Okay, so we simply means that a capacitor don't just have uh, two plates, all right? There's still going to be in between the two plates. There's going to be a medium, okay? Which of course is an insulator. This insulator may be paper, it may be oil, uh, any insulator, okay? Which of course is placed in between the two plates of the capacitor, which, okay? is known as the dielectric medium so this that medium is dielectric medium now what is the function of the dielectric medium of course the topic is uh capacitors and dielectric we're still going to discuss uh, the function of dielectric medium now the dielectric medium is actually to increase the ability of this capacitor to store charge okay so the amount of charge of the capacitors is being stored can store depend on its dielectric medium okay now that's just by the way so um symbol of a capacitor the electrical symbol of a capacitor anytime we want to represent a capacitor by an electrical symbol because of course it's a it's an electrical component that stores charge so this is the electrical symbol of a capacitor okay of course you know this is different uh, from uh, a cell a cell uh, the two plates they are not equal the positive and negative plate are not equal but the capacitor okay the two plates positive and negative are equal so there's a symbol all right so now the question is how does a capacitor store charge now a capacitor always store charge in an electric field electric field is being established when um the capacitor is actually connected to a voltage supply so i'm going to actually draw um a circuit diagram a simple circuit diagram of a capacitor being connected to a voltage supply let's say from a battery okay so the two terminal of the capacitor is connected to a battery and uh, this battery delivers a voltage v so now as you connect this capacitor to this battery you know what happened current flows through the capacitor as current flows okay this capacitor now will not be able to store charge in the field so the quantity of charge that the capacitor can store q i use q to represent the quantity of charge is directly proportional to the potential difference or the voltage that is supplied to the capacitor all right and of course you know very well that in mathematics if i should uh replace the proportionality and uh, introduce an equal to okay there's going to be a constant of proportion but this time around the constant of proportion is not going to be k okay now the constant of proportion is actually uh, a constant that is used to rate a capacitor right and that constant is constant c and it's called the capacitance of the capacitor so capacitance of the capacitor so don't forget this formula the charge stored by a capacitor is actually given by cv the c is the capacitance of the capacitor right and um, the capacitance of the capacitor is that is how the capacitor is being rated in fact what i mean by being rated is 
a capacitor is actually an electrical uh, component if you, if you want to go and buy a capacitor um, in the market okay uh, if you want to tell them the value of the capacitor you want to buy you tell them based on the capacitance right and of course the SI unit the SI unit of capacitance is farad is farad an abbreviation we use f okay so invariably now for you to go and buy capacitor you can just go tell them uh the quant the the value of the capacitor you want to buy based on its capacitance and now what is the capacitance of this of the capacitor what does it uh how does the capacitance of a capacitor affect the charge stored by a capacitor now from this formula i can simply say that okay the capacitance of a capacitor if i make it the solute formula is equal to q the charge so from this formula now i can define the cap the capacitance of a capacitor as the quantity of charge that capacitor can store per unit voltage supply to it okay quantity of charge per unit voltage which simply means that um if the capacitance of a capacitor increases then the quantity of charge it can store per unit voltage will also increase all right so please take note of that now we now go to um the construction of a capacitor how do we measure okay how do we actually measure the capacitance of a capacitor when it is being constructed because every capacitor okay must have capacitance a value just like every resistance have resistance okay measurement of capacitance so okay now let's see how we can measure capacitor now the capacitance of a capacitor okay depend on three parameters okay now first of all if that capacitor does not have any insulator in between if there's no dielectric medium that's just uh in between the capacitor there's no other dial there's no dielectric medium okay there's no insulator like paper glass or whatsoever in between okay then let's say what you have there is just air or even a free space a vacuum then at that particular point the capacitance of that cap uh, of the capacitor okay at the point where there's at the point where the capacitor okay the two place the two plates of the capacitor exist in a free space all right such capacitance is what is known as absolute capacitance so it's absolute why because there is no dielectric medium that will actually affect the capacitance all right so that car that capacitor is actually constructed in such a way that there is no dielectric medium so so how do we actually express that absolute capacitance we use c0 c0 to actually represent it so the absolute capacitance of a capacitor of course in a free space or even in air okay either it's in a free space or air is you just have a surrounding it okay is giving us epsilon zero multiplied by a all over this this is the formula for um the capacitance of a capacitor and of course i'm going to give you uh, these parameters and their uh, meaning okay of course this c0 okay is the absolute capacitance right absolute capacitance is the capacitance in free space okay i've already i've already given you that i'll give you the scissor so what now this epsilon zero okay this symbol is called epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space or you call it absolute permittivity okay absolute permittivity 
because we are dealing with free space okay so there's no uh is letter that is in between the two plates of the capacitor so that's the absolute permittivity which is also the permittivity of free space and the absolute permittivity is a constant it has a constant value which is uh, approximately 8.9 okay times 10 rest power of minus 12 so free space have this um, absolute permittivity right okay why the a here now represent uh, the area of the capacitor then the d represent the distance between the two plates so distance between the two plates all right so now from this formula now we can actually draw some conclusion okay we can simply conclude that the capacitance of a capacitor okay is proportional to the area that simply means that the larger the area of the capacitor the more capacitance you get that's number one number two the capacitance of a capacitor okay is directly proportional to the the permittivity but in this case we are looking at absolute permittivity so if there is another permittivity if there's an insulator remember the permittivity will definitely increase we'll talk about that okay so the capacitance of a capacitor is proportional to the permittivity so the higher the permittivity of uh, the insulator then uh, definitely you will have more capacitance okay but in this case we are looking at absolute absolute uh, absolute capacitance then we are not considering any insulator okay um found in between the two plates of the capacitor okay i hope that is well understood then of course from what we have here we can simply say that the capacitance of a capacitor is inversely proportional to the distance between the two plates so the closer the distance between the two plates the more capacitance you get so i hope that is well understood okay so now let's now go to the um to the actual capacitor let's look at a situation now where the capacitor now is in a standard form standard form of capacitor is such that there is okay a dielectric medium in between and that dielectric medium is okay is actually created with by putting an insulator in between okay this is letter half uh, is of different materials okay so it has been noted that anytime you construct a capacitor and, uh, in a standard form okay having an insulator in between the uh, two plates then definitely the capacitance will increase by some multiple okay so capacitance of a capacitor that's constructed that is not okay um in a free space is always multiple of the capacitor that is constructed please pardon me in a free space by a constant known as the relative permittivity so that simply means that the capacitance of the capacitor can be gotten by multiplying its absolute capacitance that's capacitance in a free space times some constant known as relative permittivity so this constant here er okay is what i call the relative relative permittivity relative permittivity all right so that is what er means so we simply means that this insulator here actually introduce uh, a multiple okay to the capacitor that increases its capacitance known as relative permittivity so different type of insulator has their different relative permittivity for example paper okay the relative permittivity of paper er 
is approximately two. Okay, so that of a of a the relative permittivity of a is one, and that is why I consider a also as a free space, since the relative permittivity of a free space free space is uh, uh is also one okay a is approximately one it's one point some you know zero zero some decimal places but which can be approximated to one so if that capacitor just have only a then it can also be considered as uh, a free space okay so please take note of that so from this formula now I can simply say that okay the capacitance of a capacitor okay Is equal to the relative permittivity multiplied by the absolute uh, capacitance which already we know that absolute capacitance is giving us absolute permittivity right multiplied by the area of the capacitor then uh, divided by divided by the, the distance apart so from this relationship we can say that okay permittivity of any dielectric medium is, can also be expressed as the relative permittivity okay of that paper of this letter that is uh, the permittivity of any capacitor capacitance capacitor okay is always given as the relative permittivity of the insulator that is used as a dielectric medium then multiply by the okay absolute um, permittivity all right so I hope this is actually is well understood all right, I will have to illustrate uh, all this using an example, okay? Okay, let's look at... Uh, okay, let's look at uh, a square... a square capacitor. A square capacitor of side okay that have a side length of uh, 20 cm okay in an electric field Okay. Separated by distance. Separated by a distance. So this square capacitor of side, okay? This for actually the plate. A square capacitor of side 20 cm okay 20 cm plates okay plate then of course is separated Separated by by distance distance of three millimeter. Okay, is supplied is supplied with PD. Of 20 volts evaluate the charge stored when 
the dielectric medium. Okay. When the dielectric medium is I, A, then I, I, paper, okay, of ER equal to 2. Okay, so a square capacitor of side 20 cm plate okay separated by a distance of 30 mill, uh, 3 millimeter is supplied with a pd of 24 they value the charge stored okay when the dielectric medium is a okay so when the dielectric medium is a of course what we have at that point is the absolute capacitance right so all you need to do is to for me to be able to first of all i'm asked to evaluate the charge you know very well that if i need to evaluate charge okay charge is equal to cv right so for air medium that means the c is going to be equal to the absolute capacitance multiplied by the voltage so i need to evaluate the absolute capacitance right the absolute capacitance is given as absolute permittivity multiplied by area then divided by the distance apart okay now first of all we need to actually get the area the area the capacitor is a square plate of course the area of a square you know very well that uh, a square is always given us l square length square okay so the side of course which also form the length is uh, 20 cm convert that to meter that will give me 0 0.2 0 0.2 then i now square it Okay, so if I square 0 0.2, I'm having 0 0.04. All right, uh, okay. So that's the area, 0 0.04 meter square. Then the distance apart, the D, distance is said to be 3 meter. So that's 3 meter. I have to convert it 3 millimeter, please pardon me. So if I convert the 3 millimeter to meter, I'm going to have, I divide by 1,000, that's going to be 0 0.003. 3 meter okay so i have to apply that now to this uh, so invariably now to get my my absolute capacitors it's gonna be equal to okay uh permittivity of free space which of course is approximately 8.9 times 10 raised to the power of minus 12 okay multiply by the area which is 0 0.004 then all over 0 0.03 okay so now i'm gonna get a calculator all right so here we go so this is gonna be 8.9 multiplied by 0 0.04 then divided by 0 0.03 okay so I have 11.8 approximately 0 0.003 okay that's 118 please pardon me this should be this is 0 0.003 so 0 0.003 so that's going to be 118 118 then times 10 raised power minus 12 okay so now that is the absolute capacitance now remember what i'm looking for is the charge so now the charge now stored is going to record to the absolute capacitance c0 then multiply by the voltage so this is going to be equal to 118 times 10 raised to the power of minus 12 then times the voltage supplied the voltage supplied is 20 volts that's 20. so let's multiply that by 20. okay 
okay I let me approximate this this was uh, from the approximation it was supposed to be 1186 that should be approximately 1189 okay let me approximate it 1189 one one eight nine so if i should multiply by that by 20 so that's two three seven two three seven so the charge stored is a pro approximately two three seven <coughs> times 10 raised to the power of minus 12 columns okay now in terms of micro columns if I want to do it in terms of micro columns, all I just need to do already 10 is by minus 6 is micro columns. So I can do this, do it this way. 2, 3, 7. I better still let it be this way, okay? All I just need to do is probably to put it in standard form. 1, 2. Move the decimal point to the point where I have 2.3. So in standard form, I have 2.37. I move the decimal point backward two times, okay? Then, of course, what will happen to this? I have to increase the pulse of 10 by two times so if i add 2 to minus 12 i'll have 10. so that is going to be the charge stored by the <clears throat> that capacitor in air all right now I, I part of the question we are looking for the charge stored by the capacitor okay when the charge stored by the capacitor okay At the point where the capacitance okay is now having uh, an insulator paper with dielectric constant of uh, with relative permittivity of two okay relative permittivity of two so at this point now you know our formula so for us to be able to get the capacitance okay of an insulator i have to multiply the relative permittivity of that insulator times the absolute capacitance so the relative permittivity of the insulator is two then multiply by the absolute capacitance that i just evaluated that's so uh, 2.37 times 10 raised to the power of minus times two times 10 raised to the power of minus 10 right okay so now okay i have to let me all right so okay so here we go <clears throat> all right so let's work on this so oh, this is gonna be two times 2.37 times 2 right oh that's 5.6 approximately so i'm having 5.6 times 10 raised to the power 10 okay so now the charge now is going to be equal to 5.6 that's the, my absolute capacitors. Oh, am I making a mistake? Okay, I just made a mistake. Okay, what I, I'm using here is the charge. Okay, yeah. So invariably, now I don't need to multiply. So that means what, what I'm having here is the charge is still the same thing. So we simply mean that the charge that is stored by the capacitor, okay, is going to be equal to the relative uh, relative permittivity of the free space then multiply by the absolute charge remember okay this charge here that is uh, that I calculated is the absolute charge okay the charge at free space okay C C zero times V is absolute charge 
so they are all related so if i want to get the charge when there is a dielectric medium all i just need to do is to multiply by the relative permittivity so anytime you want to actually get anything either charge or uh, capacitance okay in a dielectric medium simply multiply by the relative permittivity so i can actually conclude that the charge stored by that capacitor in the dielectric medium of paper is 5.6 times 10 to the power 10 coulombs okay so please take note of the relationship let me write down the relationship again so that you get to so anytime there's a dielectric medium then the capacitance will always be the relative permittivity of the dielectric medium times the absolute capacitance okay then the same thing with charge. The charge you get is going to be the relative permittivity then multiplied by the absolute charge, which you calculated from this. And uh, the same thing happens with the the permittivity of the medium is going to be equal to the relative permittivity times the absolute permittivity. So this is just what okay I needed to illustrate in this video. So please take note of them. All right, so I hope that is well understood. Okay. So now in the next uh, video, we are going to be looking at our connection of capacitor in series and in, in parallel. All right, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.